Now, I don't often like to accept super high-end stuff for videos, because I prefer to do videos on things that I can realistically go out and buy myself. However, when Gigabyte sends you an email that was clearly destined for Linus's inbox, you kinda gotta say yes. So today, we're gonna do a video on the graphics card equivalent of that ice cream that Mr. Beast ate once. And then, to balance it out, I'm gonna do the dumbest thing I could think of with it. Now, Gigabyte also sent over a fancy Z690 motherboard, the Aorus Master. Presumably because the graphics card won't associate with riffraff motherboards. Whoa, this is by far the heaviest motherboard box I've ever picked up. Because I guess it's hewn from depleted uranium. Whoa. Oh, it's so heavy. This is like at least double the weight of a normal motherboard. That is, <laughs> that is really heavy. Damn, that is one crazy VRM heatsink. When you actually look at it from the top, it seems like it extends pretty much all the way to the to the I.O. And then, speaking of heatsinks, we've got this huge chunk monster that is supposed to cool the M.2 drive under here, I think. You know a motherboard's serious when it has a huge metal backplate. Like, that is, that is beautiful. We even have built-in 10 gigabit ethernet in this motherboard. And it's got the most important feature ever, which is a physical power button on it. That in itself is worth $200 at least. But with that, let's have a look at the RTX Saudi Prince. Ah oh yes, the 3090 Ti, a graphics card that solidified NVIDIA's reputation as the kind of company that would probably burn down a puppy orphanage if they thought it would make their shareholders happy. But that doesn't make this any less crazy of a graphics card, and this is the extreme version of it, which comes with some exciting things attached to it. So let's open it up and have a look. Oh. Look at that tube! Oh, it's in two pieces. Of course it's in two pieces because there's a big thing under it. You kind of remove this bit, which is the graphics card bit, and then you can kind of separate out that. And then under, oh, what? We get a toy with it. He's been shackled because without that, he would have broken free and just desecrated the graphics card in the packaging, I'm assuming, but put him back in his tomb before he asserts his dominance on me. Damn, look at that. We've got three eight pins, and then it leads to that single NVIDIA 12 pin thing. So that is a 360 millimeter AIO radiator connected to our 3090 tie. So let's get it out of this little baggie and, and have a closer look at it. So as you can see, it's not a super long PCB, but it is quite a, a chonky one. So it's a bit of a, a bit of a chode, if you will, uh, which kind of makes sense, you know, because you got most of the cooling not on the actual card. That is plastic. Uh, I was expecting that to be mithril, so that is a little bit disappointing, <laughs> I guess. Now, in terms of rear I.O., it's got a pretty standard affair. We've got a single HDMI with three display ports. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do a six panel Mesozoic period display setup with this graphics card. Uh, but hang on to the thought about Mesozoic period ports because we may involve one in this video a bit later. Now, there is our backplate, which is a complete fingerprint magnet, as you can tell. Look at that, this is our NVLink connector, so we could theoretically run two of these in a single system. If you don't already feel like enough of an oil baron running one of these, you can run two of them as well. And then finally, here is the new 12 the power connector that should become more popular with the next generation of graphics cards. Lean that over, because I want to have- oh! Ooh, almost dropped stuff there. This is actually quite a dense fin array. Uh, but I think on that note, we're gonna have to jump to the future and do a teardown of this graphics card. Now I really like how they went about powering the fans on the radiator because there's this single little wire that runs along the AIO tube and then 
It runs along the top of the fans like that, so that you don't have to worry about a bunch of fan connectors. That's pretty cool. Well, okay, so tearing down a graphics card that's worth more than my life is, is quite scary. The huge radiator and tubes do make it quite unwieldy. Oh! Do that. Oh! It is just a huge copper plate with some heat pipes that cools pretty much everything and then it's attached to an AIO block under here that means that the VRMs and all of that is just cooled using the AIO, which is good. Yeah, no, I don't want to put too much pressure on it because I don't want to, I don't want to destroy this very valuable thing. Uh, so let me, yeah, let's just leave it at that. Holy crap. Now, this is A, an extremely dense PCB. Like, there is so much going on. And uh, it's also a huge die. Whoa, <laughs> it's so big. Another thing that's interesting to me is that you can see that there are some blank spaces for additional power delivery which doesn't make any sense. This is the 3090 tie, right? Like, w what are you gonna use that needs more power delivery on this PCB? That's a bit of a weird move. Maybe there's a higher end version that Gigabyte's gonna bring out at some point, I don't know. Now, in terms of actual power delivery, that is the just craziest VRM I have ever seen on a graphics card. I think, this is 19 phases, if I'm not mistaken. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I count 22 phases, but I'm not sure how they're arranged. It could be like an 18 plus four or something, I'm not sure. Either way though, that's crazy. Uh, just a couple things about the back, aside from the just mad density back here. Uh, there's only a couple of small thermal pads that thermally connect the back plate to the back of the PCB. Although maybe they don't need more pads considering that they have so much AIO cooling all the componentry. And then other than that, there's this protective coating that they have over the PCB, which actually seems like quite a good idea. I, I like that. And then finally, that die is an emasculating behemoth. Okay, so now that we've had a more intimate look at the 3090 tie, let's put this whole system together and game on it in just the dumbest way I can think of at the moment. <laughs> let's, let's go for it. Now for storage, I'm gonna use one of these WD Black SN750 drives, which was very kindly sent over by Micro Center. Micro Center! Now in terms of power supply, we don't want anything catching on fire. So I'm going to use this beefy HX1000 that Corsair sent over ages ago. Now this is by far the ep -niest setup that I have ever looked at on this channel, uh, which I feel like means we should kind of balance it out a little, right? We should dive it up a bit. So, I'm gonna test it in the only logical way, which is using a Mesozoic period port monitor. Now, the more astute of you probably would have noticed that this 3090 tie doesn't have a Mesozoic period port on it, because, well, obviously. Uh, so we're gonna need a bit of a converter. Luckily, they're quite easy to find. All I had to do was buy this HDMI to Mesozoic period port adapter, which should let us very easily use this behemoth of a graphics card with this very old undeserving monitor. <laughs> Nice, we've booted into the BIOS and we have a signal out to our Mesozoic period monitor, which is good. Uh, yeah, all I need to do now is install Windows and then we can try and game on this. This is tradition, we're starting off with GTA 5. This is with it running at 1080p. Um, this is actually a terrible game to test this with because the moment that you start averaging about 160 or 170 frames per second, the game engine starts stuttering into oblivion. I, wh why is this happening? That is the most messed up frame graph I've ever seen. What the hell? Whoa, let me, let me try something. 
I, I'm not quite sure what was going on there. I just plugged the external games drive into a different USB port. So <laughs> for some reason that fixed it. But as you can tell, the system is not doing much to, to give this frame rate at 1080p over Mesozoic period port. And um, wow, those GPU temperatures are wild. But anyway, screw this. Let's go to a game that makes more sense. We're using 3.7 gigs of video memory, which makes me very glad that we've got 24 gigs of it in this graphics card. Wait a minute, I, I need to see if I can uh, bypass that 200 FPS limit. Ah, oh, yes, there we go. I figured out how to unshackle the game engine and uh, we're using a lot more of the GPU now. Although, weirdly, now that we're running at so much of a higher frame rate, there's this like strobing artifact on the monitor now. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but it, I don't know. It, it looks like the frame rate is like overdriving the monitor and it, it like someone's gonna explode. But yes, with the unshackled frame rate, we do occasionally hit about 100% utilization on our 3090 Ti. Um, but honestly, most of the time, it, it's kind of in like 160 kind of range and it's still quite stuttery. I don't really know why that is. Well, we almost hit 400 watts of power draw there and we're, we're still under 50 degrees Celsius. Wow, I really wish my monitor could display more than 60 Hertz so that I can actually benefit from this frame rate. I don't know, maybe that'll do the trick. Let's see. What should run at like 20 frames per second with 100% GPU utilization? I mean, I wasn't super far off. We're at 60 frames per second. Oh, look at all them rays being traced. So clearly, you need a 3090 Ti to run Cyberpunk at max settings at 1080p, <laughs> and then you still get 60 frames per second. So let's see if we can get a higher frame rate than that. I think our best bet is gonna be some DLSS action. Let's try quality DLSS. Oh, it did help. We went from just under 60 frames per second to about 70 frames per second. Uh, so I really am glad that the 3090 Ti does have some, some DLSS in it. It's still quite stuttery though. Everything has been quite stuttery. Like, look at that frame graph. Okay, let's put it in performance mode because, you know, we want to get some performance for our very expensive GPU. So with performance mode DLSS running at 1080p, the actual render resolution that this 3090 Ti is, is busy rendering is 960 by 540. We're only getting 93 frames per second. That is... That is kind of wild. Now on a different note, considering that Mesozoic period port monitors have a bit of an analog haze to them, I can't actually tell the difference in sharpness between DLSS on and off on this monitor, which that's a pretty cool advantage of running an analog display in the age of DLSS. Think if there's any game that's actually going to stress this system at 1080p without the engine exploding. It's gonna be Doom Eternal. Ultra Nightmare, isn't that just a colloquial term for sleep paralysis? I guess, I guess it is. Well, the weird monitor artifact is back. You can see that there's kind of like strobing happening, but look at that frame graph. That is what I'm looking for. And you can actually really tell that 400 frame per second smoothness over this uh, this 60 hertz Mesozoic period port monitor. Doom Eternal has like the most impressive game engine ever. Like it's it's kind of shockingly impressive. Actually, let me, I, I really want to see this on a higher refresh rate monitor. So I am, I am going to remove the Mesozoic period port monitor for a second. Whoa, that is, that's actually kind of wild. It is making some weird sounds at me. I can play the graphics card like an instrument by by, by where I by where, by changing where I'm looking. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I need to set up a microphone so we can hear that probably. So now that we have the real Chad monitor back in rotation, I just want to see quite how far we can push the Doom engine. 
And uh, let's do that using DLSS. Again, the thing that stands out to me is that you can't really tell the DLSS is on with this monitor. So that is a benefit, I guess. Uh, but other than that, we have gotten maybe a couple hundred FPS more. I mean, let's see if we can push it further. Like, do we just drop the settings down to low? Again, visually, it looks pretty much identical. I can't really tell. We are getting close to 100% utilization on our 12900K. I actually just noticed that. That's pretty crazy, actually. So, having finally found a way to fully stress this monster system with this stupid monitor bearing, I think that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you, Gigabyte, for sending over that behemoth graphics card. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one, and maybe consider watching another video. I recommend the one where I build the world's worst multi-display gaming setup. Uh, that'll pop up in a second. Anyway, thank you for watching, and until a couple seconds from now, bye-bye.